Hey everyone, in today's video I want to talk to you about how to get over art block. I haven't really addressed this on here, but you may see me mention it on my Instagram or maybe I won't post as much and you may be wondering if it's because of art block, and usually it is. If you aren't feeling inspired or motivated and you like to get over any kind of artist block you're having or if you simply aren't liking what you've been creating lately, hopefully the points I'll be making in this video can help you push past it. If you are feeling this way, you are not alone. I feel like this is something every artist goes through, maybe some more than others, and there are a lot of factors that contribute to artist block. Recognizing these can help you to start working on ways to keep your creativity flowing, resulting in less burnout. Try not to beat yourself up about it, it's just the way the creative process is. We have high and low points with our art and try and learn to enjoy all of it. The way that we feel in the moment uh, often translates directly into our art. You can totally turn this into like an art therapy kind of thing and just create bad or ugly art as a way of recognizing how you are feeling and not being ashamed of it. This is definitely putting a positive spin on it as long as you're not beating yourself up about creating quote unquote bad art. I think because of the world we live in today where social media is at the forefront and it kind of creates this false image that artists need to create constantly to be able to post new things daily to all these different uh, platforms, it's just really unrealistic. Um, and if you're trying to keep up with the fast-paced trend of social media, you can quickly find yourself in an art rut or a burnout. And I do really want to quickly point out that I'll be using phrases like art block, artist burnout, art rut throughout the video, and it's all the same, well it's kind of pretty much the same thing, right? It's just keeping us from creating and doing what we love. And the same thing when I say like draw or paint, just apply however it is you create with the points I'm making. Um, but yeah, I just want you to know you are not alone in this. I've gone through burnouts many times, taking months off at a time and not even sketching anything because of burnout, social media exhaustion, artist block, and depression. All these things can really pile up and seem like the wall is getting too high to climb over, but it's not. I hope that by the end of this video, you can change your perspective on it and see it in a more positive light. Recognize when you do need a break from art and be okay with that. And yes, it's okay not to draw. It's okay to not paint or create in whatever way you usually do. Uh, we are not machines, especially not like that AI art stuff going on at the moment. We all need time to recharge and have the energy and the mindset to make something new again. So with that being said, these are some of the ways that personally help me get over art burnout and while I'm talking about that, you can watch me ink this drawing I titled Dandelions and Daisies. Super in love with this drawing. Uh, the footage is older and I wish I filmed some more interesting angles for you guys, but it is what it is. Uh, hopefully you can still enjoy it. Anyways, let's get started. So tip number one is think about what inspires you recently. Really take some time to think about what has been inspiring you lately and maybe it was inspiring you even before the art block happened or maybe it's still inspiring you now but you just don't feel in the mood to create. I find it helpful to go through my saved posts on Instagram um, or Pinterest and taking some time to look at all the posts that I've saved and then writing down what I found interesting or inspiring about them. Write it down on paper or save some trees and write it in your favorite note-taking program. Uh, I started using Notion a couple months back and it's totally free and I use it for everything from planning my day, shop updates, Patreon planning, or note-taking. And I highly recommend checking it out if you're looking to try some digital note-taking planning alternatives. Not sponsored by the way, just really love the program I want to share it with you guys. So maybe you're looking at your safe posts and really love the color palette they used or the way they drew the leaves or maybe you just liked the subject matter they drew. Maybe you just really love that particular shade of green and you instantly get a spark of joy when looking at it. If you are writing down all of these things you like, try and incorporate them into your next piece. Side note, this is also a great way to dive into finding your style. Recognizing bits and pieces of things that you like from other artists or nature or everyday things and compiling them into your work can lead you to refining your art style over time. 
My second tip is to try a new color palette. If you work in limited color palettes normally, maybe it's time to try using a large color palette to change things up. If you use tons of colors, like over 10, maybe give yourself a challenge and only use three. Search color palettes online for inspiration. Uh, you can literally even just Google color palettes and you'll get tons of results. You can narrow your search by typing in things like moody color palettes or boho color palettes and see what sparks interest in you. Maybe you start looking through all the results but find yourself really gravitating towards like the more earthy muted color palettes. And this is like a huge sign to incorporate these colors into your next piece. If you like experimenting more and don't like the idea of using pre-made color palettes, you can even try online sites like Adobe Color. You can go to color.adobe.com and start messing with sliders and different color harmonies and find some colors that resonate with you. I particularly love using this for finding some cool limited color palettes. Maybe I just want to do a triad palette and I know that I want to use a certain shade of green. I'll just find that green on the color wheel and it will give me some other colors that go with that green. And I can use that as a jumping off point to maybe try something similar. Uh, maybe try and change the tone of the green a bit and really kind of fine tune the colors I like. So yeah, I highly recommend Adobe Color. My third tip is to draw something easy. Something that you feel like you draw well, maybe even without reference, right? Something that you don't have to think too much about. Um, your hand just kind of knows what to do and before you know it, bam, it's drawn. For me, I love sketching tiny little one inch faces on a single page as like a cluster of sketches. And yeah, they pretty much all look like clones of each other, but sometimes like I'll try and make something different if I'm feeling spicy. But usually I just draw the same face and I draw it down to the shoulders. Um, so kind of like a bust drawing, but not fully that way. Uh, the point is this exercise is meant to dip your toes in the water, so to speak. Just kind of inching your way back into creating while keeping it as simple and minimal effort and like low brain power as possible. Maybe you do this one morning and set aside like 10 minutes to draw your favorite thing in your dusty little sketchbook. And then before you know it, it's like three hours later and you've got paints and brushes out and you're working on your next big masterpiece and bam, your art block is cured. That might actually happen and it's happened to me before quite literally. <laughs> um, but I'd say this is a rare case. Usually when I've been in a rut with my art and I try this method of drawing simple things, I might have to do it a few minutes here and there over several days or even a couple weeks before I start like pulling myself out of this art block. Don't feel bad if it takes you longer to overcome art block than someone else. We are all different people with different struggles, different minds, different worries, and it's totally okay. You will create again and you will find that deep fire within again. It'll take as long as it needs to take. All right, the fourth tip is to draw or paint some still life studies. Yes, still lifes. Why so many people dread these, I don't know. If you've never tried them, just do it. Make your own at your desk or find a pretty picture of some flowers online. Just try it. And if you have tried drawing a still life and absolutely hated it, well, I don't know, maybe your still life just was the wrong subject matter and wasn't interesting. Or maybe it's because you realized you lacked the art fundamentals to draw it well and that put you in a bad mood, furthering the art rate you're already in, and it's just kind of like spiraled down from there, and it's just a really bad experience. And to that, I would say, maybe it's time to dive into studying foundations. You know, form, shape, color, value, perspective, hard versus soft edges, and don't feel like you need to pay for this information. We live in a world where the answer is at our fingertips, aka just search the web. I personally like going on YouTube and finding artists that teach on this topic about art fundamentals or foundations. And of course you can use paid sites like Skillshare, which may work better for you if you want a more structured learning plan. Um, yeah, I think it's important to recognize that the more skill you have, the easier it becomes to create. Because you can focus less on trying to draw the thing that you want to draw and put more time and effort into stylizing it in a way that speaks to you, making it your own, or being able to draw something well for imagination versus spending hours trying to find the perfect reference because you don't know how to draw it without seeing it. And I know this is a touchy subject for some people, uh, but it's that's just my two cents on it. <laughs> so yeah, 
The idea of drawing a still life is it's supposed to take away the stress of making something new or super creative or trying to draw from your imagination and you're just able to paint exactly what you see. Take this time to improve your drawing or painting skill by working on values and shading and edge control, um, but also just let it be what it is, a study. No one has to see it. Don't feel like you have to make it amazing so you can post it on your social media. Just paint it. Learn from it. Be happy that you're creating art. Even if it isn't what you want to create, like all those cool ideas floating around in your head, this is just a stepping stone to getting back to creating those things. Tip number five is to try a new art medium. Trying new things can be refreshing and fun, so I would really recommend trying a new way to create art. Now, it might be scary if maybe you only use black ink to draw and nothing else, uh, but start small and try using some colored inks or maybe a colored pencil instead, or trying something really new like painting or sculpting or take a pottery class, try fiber arts. Just try something new, something out of your comfort zone as a way of sparking a new interest and possibly even finding a way of creating art that comes more naturally to you. This can also just be a way of taking a little art vacation, so to speak. While you aren't creating in the way that maybe you spent years doing, you are still being creative. You are still making something new and find enjoyment and clarity in that. Maybe even just use this new medium like colored pencils, for example, specifically as a way of creating art when you are in an art rut. It's like a little vacation from your typical art making process where you still get to create and be expressive while taking a little break. Keep it low pressure and don't feel like you need to make a masterpiece. Maybe just use this medium in your sketchbook and mess around. Try and keep a positive mindset. Learning new things can be exciting and fun if you let it. And understand that you most likely won't be great at it at first and that's okay. My sixth tip to getting out of an art rut is to go to an art store. I'd actually encourage you to go by yourself. This will force you to make decisions by yourself as you won't have anyone to ask, should I buy this color or that brush or which sketchbook should I buy? Go at a time when you aren't rushed, a time when you can freely explore the store and not have to worry about, you know, only having 30 minutes to shop or something. I find being surrounded by new supplies can really spark inspiration and put me in a better mood. I like looking at everything, all the different paint tubes, seeing if any colors jump out at me, rummaging through all the sketchbooks and debating if I really need to buy another sketchbook when I haven't finished, you know, the other three ones that I have. <laughs> uh, it's just a really nice experience. And admittedly, I usually shop for art supplies online nowadays. But nothing beats going into the physical store, testing out supplies, and finding that exact shade of colored pencil you were looking for, because there have definitely been several times that I shop online for paints or colored pencils, and the color in the swatch they show online is very different than what it looks like in person. So shop in store when possible, and I hope you'll find it as inspiring as I do. Which brings me to my next tip. Tip number seven is to go outside. This can be such a refreshing thing to do, especially if you find yourself inside or at home most days. Um, just go to the park and take a walk. I will admit I don't practice this tip that much, but I do recognize that when I do go out, it is really beneficial. If you do go on a walk, maybe even take some reference photos of different flowers and plants to draw when you get home. Maybe you find a super cool cluster of mushrooms and want to draw them later. I find it lightens my mood and the fresh air is like perfect for clearing my head and coming back to my art with a fresh mind and often new ideas. My eighth tip is to just start something. It could be looking up references for a new painting, drawing some anatomy studies, or opening that abandoned sketchbook that's been sitting on your bookshelf for a year and a half. Just start. I don't know what it is, but simply the act of starting something, even if you don't want to in the moment, usually makes it so much easier to keep working and getting things done. I know the concept of forcing yourself to do something you don't want to do is hard, but the more you do it, the less difficult it gets. This brings me to my next tip. Tip number nine is to participate in productive procrastination. You know, the thing where you procrastinate on what you really should be doing by doing something else that still needs to be done, but maybe of less importance. 
And if you're like me, you've done this many times. You know those times where you're feeling overwhelmed, um, or maybe you should be starting the art project, but instead you get this surge of energy to go deep clean your fridge, or do the dishes that have been sitting there for a little too long, or reorganize your drawers, and doing everything but art while still technically being productive by getting something else done. If you're like me, you like having a daily or maybe just weekly to-do list, something that you are able to check things off as things you have done. And this act of marking task as complete gives me a sense of accomplishment, even if it's like a small task, um, just like doing my morning skincare routine. The act of doing one task usually ends up snowballing into completing more tasks throughout the day and hopefully leading into creating some art. Tip number 10 is to recreate an old artwork of yours. This can be so inspiring seeing how much you've improved over the years and that could spark interest into creating more and eventually coming out of art block. Because you are redrawing something you've already drawn in the past, you don't have to think too much. You can just focus on the act of drawing and don't have to spend a lot of brain power on thinking of something new. You don't have to use the same medium that you made the original in. In fact, it's probably a good idea to use whatever medium you are currently most comfortable with to make this new piece. Tip number 11 is to freshen up your workspace. You don't have to go crazy with this and spend all your monies, and actually, you don't even have to spend any money. Sometimes just deep cleaning your space, changing your desktop wallpaper, or rearranging your workspace is enough to clear your head and spark inspiration. I know for me, I feel way less inspired if my desk is messy or the room as a whole is messy. That's why my desk is always clean and free of clutter, unless I'm like literally in the middle of making art. But if you do want to spend a little money to bring new life to your space, I'd highly recommend getting a low maintenance desk plant, something like a ZZ plant or even a succulent. I feel like plants bring a bit of that outdoor freshness inside and it really helps keep a calm and inviting atmosphere to work and create in. You can also try getting a colored desk mat to bring in a pop of color to your space, or getting a nice lamp with settings to control the temperature of the light to fit your mood. I often like working with a more blue toned light, but sometimes I want a more yellow, warm toned light, and it's nice having the option to change it as you please. And lastly, tip number 12 is to take a break. Don't do anything overly creative for a few days or a week. How long you take a break is up to you. Again, don't beat yourself up. You are taking this break intentionally so that when you are ready to come back to making art, you can come back with a clear head ready to work. You can see this on a smaller scale if you've ever been working on a painting or something and maybe you're feeling stuck or burnt out so you take the rest of the day off and when you start working on it the next day, it's as if you have these new set of eyes that see everything that needs to be fixed or improved upon and you are eager and ready to work at it and maybe even finish it. So again, take some time to do other things. Go see those friends you've been making excuses to not go out. Go see a movie or stay home and binge watch a show. Go to an aquarium or read a book. Pay attention while doing these other activities when you feel a spark of inspiration or a new idea that pops into your mind. Write it down or scribble a quick sketch. I find that some of my best ideas happen when I'm not sitting down trying to force myself to concept a new idea. They just come to me when I'm doing a mundane task or doing something non-art related. And with that being said, we're at the end of the video. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I would really love to hear your thoughts on this topic and if you have any other ways of getting over art block, feel free to leave a comment on this video and maybe it can help someone else out. If you like this ink drawing, I have prints of it up on my shop and the original drawing is for sale as well. You can find links to my shop and Patreon in the description of this video. And be sure to keep updated on my latest work on Instagram. Thank you again for being here and have a great rest of your day. I'll talk to you guys in my next video. Bye.